She is the former UFC women's flyweight champion. I'll never get used to saying that. And hopefully I won't have to say that for more than another like eight days until, you know, she has that title back around her waist. It is always my great pleasure to speak to Valentina Shevchenko. Valentina, how are you? Hello, Damon. Uh, feeling very good, feeling like uh, amazingly strong. I had amazing training camp and yes, ready to like break this, what I have to break in terms to get my uh, belt back. I love it. Uh, I know you spent a lot of time in Thailand for this camp. How was uh, Tiger Muay Thai? How was time in Thailand? Uh, three months. What This is the time what we spend in Thailand. Tiger Muay Thai is uh, like amazing as always. I had the opportunity to work like with uh, so many great athletes over there. And uh, that's why I'm saying like it was amazing training. I'm very strong, a lot of sweat, a lot of like uh, uh, power going through. So yeah, it was great. You, I always joke with you that like, I always live vicariously through your travels because you go to so many cool places, you do so many cool things. And I know that like, you do travel a lot for your training camps. Is it like, is it fun? Like, obviously you go to Thailand to train. There's a lot of great training over there, but is it like nice to have, like, when you have a day off, you can get on the boat, you can go, go to the beach. I know you love the beach. So like, is it nice to have a place where you can like get the best of all worlds? Uh, you know, for me, Thailand, it's a little bit, it's definitely yes, but also it's for me, it's a little bit have different feeling because um, I am traveling to Thailand already like uh, for 20 years. And uh, some of times I was like living there like four months, six months. It's kind of like not just come there and uh, spend a little bit time without uh, uh, deeply dive into the culture of, a, uh, of the country. No, I did that and uh, same like me being Muay Thai fighter I fought uh, so many times in Thailand I am 17 world Muay Thai champion and 17 times and it's kind of like um being there it's like being at home that's why this is what I, I have feelings for Thailand yeah it's like a home away from home it's true it's <laughs> true so now Valentina, I mentioned, of course, you know, um, obviously we know the fight coming up with Alexa Grasso. It is the rematch. Um, I think a lot of people were a little shocked at the results of the last fight. I mean, getting, you know, full credit to Alexa Grasso. She got the job done. Can I ask, you know, now sitting matter of days away from the rematch, like, did you like, how much time do you go back and, and, and spend rewatching that fight or having your coaches rewatch that fight? Or do you just move on pretty quickly? Because, I don't want to take, I'm not discrediting anything she did. It really came down to just one, one moment. It was one moment. You were winning the fight, the spin kick. She took advantage of it again, credit to her. But like, I'm curious, like, do you sit there and rewatch the tape? Do you break it down or do you just kind of move on and get ready for the next one? No, yes, definitely. It's kind of like you have to watch. We have to watch it because this is how you uh, move on. You're watching your fights. No matter it's winning fights, losing fights, you have to watch them. And um, um, it's normal. It's kind of like you watching the fight, uh, taking out all emotions from that you just watching what you have to watch that and um i feel like um yeah it's exactly how you said it's kind of like just one moment but unfortunately this moment it's uh defines the uh, the whole result and uh, yeah many people they kind of like um she had one successful shot maybe at the first round and this shot was caught on cameras and now everyone like looking at this shot only without watching all the fight and saying like all the stuff what they can like bring up but it was not like that it was like completely winning the fight i was winning the fight and yeah this is what is mma MMA, it's a um, hard fight style. It's a very hard fight game. And yeah, sometimes it's happened. But the most important is that right now I have the opportunity to make everything right, how it's supposed to be at the first time. And um, like, I'm not playing around. I'm just go there. My goal, enter the octagon, finish, destroy my opponent, take my belt back and continue what I have to continue. Absolutely. I love that mentality. And I assume, I mean, again, you were such a long reigning champion 
And again, kind of, kind of like what happened with Kamar Usman when he lost to Leon Edwards. It was you know very last minute. He was winning the fight. He got caught. Everyone understood why you get in a re- media rematch. I assume you wanted this. Like this was like, can I assume like right afterwards you're like, I want a rematch right away. Yes, this is. I, I think this is how it's supposed to be because uh, definitely. But I was not discarding opportunity to have another fight, and even the UFC offered me to fight uh, one fight between. Uh, but uh, she declined the fight. She said, "Like, oh no, maybe I'm not ready." Yes, uh, that's why I'm in immediate uh, rematch. It is uh, what I am having right now. Okay. Okay. So now. Can I ask, like, what, what, without giving away any you know, training camp secrets or anything, of course, just, you know, maybe judging from the first fight, what, what, what exactly did you learn about Alexa Grasso? I mean, she was tough. Uh, again, you were winning the fight. She was sticking in there. And again, she, she made the most of the opportunity. But without giving away any, you know, game plan or strategy secrets, like, what did you learn about Alexa in that first fight that, that you, that you'll carry into the second fight? Uh, you know, uh, about Grasso, it's like, um, I don't have to learn anything about her. And it's kind of like, it's mostly focusing on uh, my performance and bringing back that dangerous, the most dangerous like side what I have, bringing back the whole character what I have, the strong, like when you move forward and you don't do one step, you're not committed, no one, not one mistake. This is real, was all about uh, bringing th- those like uh, all together and make it solid and make it ki- kind of like a rock that it's going through and just like make everything like plain, living all plain. This is what all about the training of what I have. Yeah. Can I ask Valentina, you know, I mentioned, of course, you were such a long reigning champion and, and we've heard this from a couple of other champions in the past. And I, I bring up Kamar Usman. I think he's an example of that. After he lost the title, he was almost like, I won't say relieved. No one wants to lose. We know that. But like, he was like, the pressure was kind of off because at that point when he was fighting Leon Edwards, everyone said, are you, are you the greatest welterweight of all time? Are you better than George St. Pierre? Are you this, you're that. And he never put those expectations on himself. It was people like me saying that, like fully admit it was me, guys like me saying that to him. And he said it was, it was kind of a relief to just kind of like move on beyond that and then fight in the rematch. Did you have any feelings that like being champion, like the pressure of that, the spotlight, like you always seem like a very even tempered person. And I love that you travel and do all these things. You kind of get away from it all. And you're not, you know, you're not living in Vegas, you know, 12 months out of the year. So you're not getting constantly bombarded by it. But was there any of that? Or or when you lost the title, was it kind of like immediately like, I want that belt back? You know, I actually don't understand people who are saying it was kind of relief losing the belt. I really don't understand because it's not relief in it. It's extra pressure because you have to get it back now. And I would, if you ask me what I choose, I choose pressure with the belt. I love that mentality. And you're right. I mean, listen, no one should want to, I mean, I don't think anyone wants to lose and, uh, you know, like I said, I mean, there is a pressure that comes along with being champion, but I, I, it seems like you embraced that and you were obviously the longest reigning champion in women's UFC history. So it says a lot about your character. And, and it, like I said, it even feels weird to me right now. Like I announced she was the former champion. Like, it just feels weird to me, Valentina. We will fix it. And this is the most important. We're going to fix it. <laughs> um, we mentioned, you know, again, I don't, you know, I don't talk a lot about strategy and, and, and game planning and things like that, but you mentioned, you know, the, 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 almost, it sounds like a, a little bit of fire inside you right now. The, I don't know. I won't say anger. You said, you know, you kind of take the emotion and you extract the emotion out of it, but going through that fight. And, and again, it, it's over, it's, it's past, it's done. You got the rematch, but does that kind of light a fire under you when you have a moment like that? Like, again, I take nothing away from Lex. Like if you had just gotten, if it was a 50, 45 decision, it was just a lopsided fight. Maybe, you know, just, it was a bad camp or whatever, but again, it was that one moment. Does that, does that light it? Cause it seems like you're, you're really incredibly motivated. You seem really, really motivated right now. You know, I would say like, what is my mindset right now? Mindset when it's going to, uh, it's going to be done when it's going to be done. And it's going to be done September 16th. So for me, there is no uh, like after. There is no Sunday. There is no Monday after that uh, following Saturday. For me, I live only 
with this day. That's why it's kind of like um, I'm I'm not having plans what it's gonna be next because everything for me it's like all my concentration, all my determination, all my power, force, mentality, character, spirit. It's all goes to September 16, and like surely, slowly and surely we're gonna approach September 16, and I will be ready for the date. I will be ready to take what is mine. I would I would classify you, Valentina, as one of the strongest, mentally strongest fighters I've ever spoken to in all the years I've been covering this sport. You are very mentally strong. We talked about we talked about this after the Tyler Santos fight when somebody I think it was Aaron Blanchfield, somebody was like questioning your ground game because you went to the ground with her and she had some success in that fight. And I remember, you know, it, it, it was it was kind of a weird comment. And, and because you've been such a well-rounded fighter, you didn't really let it bug you, but it kind of motivated you in that regard. I know after you lose, immediately everyone, you know, tries to find out why. Like, why did it happen? Why did this happen? And And people say. You know, I've heard a couple of people saying like, you know, well, maybe it's just not Valentina's time anymore. Like, you know, she's passing the torch. It's just not her time anymore. Does that, does that make you angry or upset you when people say things like that, that like somehow because you lost a fight, suddenly you're, you're, you're not as good as you once were. Like, again, I, I, we got to give credit to Alexa Grasso for getting the job done. I don't think it's Valentina lost a step. It's Alexa took advantage of a good situation. She won. Um, now you're going to go back out there and prove you're the best in the world. This is the goal. This is exactly what I'm going to do. And to show the people who are like, uh, and to show uh, for all my supporters, to show all my support to, to them as well. And to show the one who says the different things and other things, to show them that they are wrong. It's like, it's not because their decision or something they decide and they put these like words on top of you and they trying to stick these words on you. No, no. It's kind of like the end it's go- it's gonna be when I decide so. And I decide it's not gonna be anytime very like soon. I'm gonna be fighting before I feel I wanna fight. I wanna fight and I wanna win this belt and I will win this belt. I love it. I love it. Um, Valentina, we haven't spoken, you know, since the last one. Um, one thing, again, your focus is 100% Alexa Grasso. I love that, uh, that mentality. It's something that Matt Brown says to me before every time he fights. He says to me, when I fight on Saturday, Sunday doesn't exist. Like the future doesn't exist beyond that Saturday that I'm fighting. And I think that is a mentality. So this question is not about like who's next or challengers, but obviously one fight we always talked about in the past was, of course, the rematch with Amanda Nunes. It was a fight that we all talked about. We all assumed would happen at some point. She kind of surprised everybody in June when she announced her retirement. She walked away. She actually gave up the titles and she left the USADA pool, everything. Can I ask like just your reaction? Were you surprised that she retired? And and is there, because we talked about that fight. So I actually joked with you for years, John Valentine. I wouldn't ask you about the fight because I was like, you're so sick of hearing about Amanda Nunes. I stopped asking you about it. But like, was there any, like in the back of your head, was there a little bit of disappointment that like maybe that one would never happen again now that she's retired? Uh, you know, at that moment, I was kind of like uh, emotionless. It's actually a little bit um, surprised me because uh, not because like why she did that. I understand why she did that. She uh, had for like uh, so long this constant pressure, physical, mental pressure. It's very hard like to continue, keep going. And maybe she just want uh, after all she done in the sport, she just want to have some quiet and free time with her family without like thinking that I have to go to the gym and put all my performance like on the uh, 100%. Yes, it's kind of like understandable but uh surprised uh because she's young she is in great shape and kind of like you still uh, have like um, another like few title defense or like continue you still can do it this is uh the type of surprise but in the same way i understand the decision why it was taken and uh it's kind of like uh, I don't think no one has to judge it because she did amazing. She did great things. And uh, but if you are speaking about the third fight, uh, you know, I still I still think that there is uh, 
opportunity that kind of like now she a little bit rest, a little bit like uh, calm. And after like a year or two, she decided to uh, come back to the fight business. And I am planning to be around as well. So yes, I still think it's opportunity. I'm not saying that she will come back, but I'm saying she might come back. So yeah, we might still see that. That door, that door may not be shut, and you're absolutely right. It's funny. Uh, Paul Felder, maybe you saw the news, like Paul Felder's talking about fighting again, and when he retired, you know, he started doing commentary, and I was like, there's, like he, he seemed like he was happy just doing his thing commentating, and then here we go. Like, you know, he's back in the USADA police training. He wants to fight again. That's just the nature of it. You know, it's hard to walk away, and you're right. Like, maybe a year, year and a half away from it, she'll start missing it. She finally got a little bit of the break of being champion, and, you know, she gets that fire built back in her uh, and wants to fight again. I'm sure you heard recently all the rumors about Ronda Rousey. I don't think Ronda Rousey's ever going to fight again, but there's rumors about her. It is, it is, uh, it is hard. So again, never say never, right? Uh, of course, of course, this is a fight, and this is what fighters miss the most, that uh, feeling when they step into the octagon, when they go through the fight week, the, when they go through the, all the crowds, like they walk out to the octagon, and this is what they, it's kind of like why they come back from retirement and why they uh, continue to do so. Yeah, I, I do like your mentality, though, when it comes to her, because obviously, listen, it's a fight that we all wanted to see. And again, we may still see it. But I know, you know, you as a champion and you as a uh, fighter, you can appreciate what Amanda did in the sport, right? Like she was an incredible fighter. She achieved great things. Of course, it's kind of like uh, it's uh, it's amazing for not only for her, it's uh, amazing for uh, the whole uh, female MMA community because like see the examples of the strong women of their uh, like uh, technically super strong, like like uh, many of them, many of us. Yes, and I think it's kind of like very important for female uh, martial arts, mixed martial arts to move on and grow up every single day. You know, it's funny because when Ronda came to the UFC, you know, it was just the women's bantamweight division and that division was stacked. And obviously you look at all the things that she did and then eventually going on to Amanda and all those fighters over there. And you look at what Strawweight has done, of course, Rose Namajunas, a person you've trained with, of course, a couple times champion. Obviously, Joanna and Jacek are great in her own right. And I remember when the flyweight division started and, and you went there and you had the great fight with Joanna and, and you established yourself as champion, you built it. And it was just like, it always felt like a matter of time before flyweight really took off. And, and, and now, in my opinion, Valentina, and I'm sure you probably agree with me, flyweight is by far the best division in, in women's mixed martial arts right now, because it's like the best of all worlds. We've seen the fighters come down from bantamweight. We've seen the fighters come up from, from straw weight. And then we just see a lot more natural flyweights. I, I, I can I ask the question, like, do you agree? Like, cause I think in, in my opinion, the women's flyweight division is the best division across all women's MMA. When you look at depth, you look at talent, uh, and it took a couple of years to get there, but, do, but do you agree? Like, I feel like flyweight has taken over now as like the premier, division in women's MMA. I was saying that for years and finally <laughs> you are agree with me right now. <laughs> it took us a while to come around Valentina. Um I, but I think it's normal because um for everything it has to pass some time for people to accept it and it was the same like uh when it was uh, with the straw weight with the uh bantam weight with like uh female mma in general after years like people we are accepted and we recognize it but at first it's kind of like oh no this is something like wrong with it if you remember the uc belt the old one in the new one uh, i think it was 2019 when they represent the new belt and many people say no i like this the old style more uh and some people oh i like the new style a little bit but mostly they were saying like no bring us the old one back it's because something new it has to pass some time for people to accept it and now finally uh after like so many years i was saying the same thing people kind of like ready to accept it 
And I'm sure you get excited as well. I mean, listen, your total focus is on Alexa Grasso, but I know everyone wants to ask you about like Aaron Blanchfield and Mano Fior, and I'm not going to ask those questions because your focus is on Alexa Grasso, but it's got to be exciting to see the young new talent come up, right? Because uh, that's what you want as champion. You want those challenges, and I'm sure you know once you get your belt back, you'll gladly fight Mano, or you'll gladly fight Aaron or whoever else is out there. I'm sure it's exciting to see the young new, like the new talent coming up. This is exactly this is exactly the feeling. But as you mentioned, as you said, it's very right. The goal is get belt uh, belt back. Can I ask real quick, Valentina? Um, you know, obviously, again, your only focus is Alexa Grasso. To that point. If you go out there and get your title back, everything goes the way you want it to go on September 16th. And I assume, you know, you don't want a decision. You want to knock out, you want to submit her, you want to put her away and kind of put Thank a stamp you. on it. <laughs> What's that? To put the statement, right? Yes, exactly. To make that statement. Uh, but can I ask, like, because, you know, again, the way it would go is, and this is the sport, how we are, you know, if you beat her, you'd be tied one, one, would you be open to fighting Alexa again down the road? Is that, I know that's something you're not thinking about right now, but I'm only saying that because that's kind of the nature of the sport. You know, it's kind of like the same way as what you mentioned for me, doesn't exist. Sunday. For me, there is only Saturday, September 16. And in turn, to answer your question, I will have to uh, to make the job right, to make the job done and done it very right, the right way. And that's why I'm not like putting my mind out. I will focus only on what I have to do September 16. That's why uh, kind of like no answering right now, but all the plans, all the future moves, it's going to be revealed uh, same night after I will do my job right. So what you're telling me is, is we need to have this interview again on September 18th, 19th. And I can ask you that question. And I introduce you as the, 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 the once again, the, the UFC flyweight champion, Valentina Chichenko. That's what you're telling me. We have a deal. <laughs> <laughs> um, real quick before I let you go, Valentina, I was, uh, you know, I always, I, I always tell you, I live vicariously through your Instagram, and, and obviously this one was mostly just you training and getting ready, and you know, being in Thailand uh, and preparing, and that's been your sole focus. But I did notice I also follow your sister Antonina. It looks like she is officially being a pilot now. Uh, it looks like she's doing very, very well. I remember talking to you years ago when she was getting her pilot's license. It looks like she's actually flying now for a living. Is that what she's doing now? Oh, actually, you are kind of like missing a lot of things what happened. Like she is not a, a, a officially pilot. She is officially pilot already one year ago. And she is officially captain of her pilot, uh, um, uh, of her plane. And she is working on trade, trade wind. So she, a uh, uh, few days ago, she made all the preparation, all the hours what she was flying, all the hours she did night flights, all the like all these hard days, and she became pilot, uh, captain, captain of of uh, um, um, uh, um, just once. Uh, uh, her plane, her plane, the name of her plane. We have to, uh, you have to go to the, her Instagram and she, her recent, uh, post when she, uh, like uh, represented with the, for, uh, four stripes, right? Uh -huh. Like, like for the captain. So yeah, she's not officially pilot. She's officially captain. That's amazing. Have you now, has, has she flown you anywhere since she's been, since she's been piloting? Of course, we were flying over here in Las Vegas, in Nevada, but it was like time ago. And uh, but uh, I definitely would like to fly with her again. And uh, because like the, the, the plane, what she is uh, flying right now, it's more powerful. What she, we were flying because we were flying on uh, Cessna 174. And um, yeah, it's kind of like different feeling. And I'm so happy uh, for my sister sister for Antonina because it's kind of like uh it's so hard work it's so hard job it's like constant uh pressure and like concentration what you have to be uh uh you have to have all the time because you are piloting. You have uh, your passengers on the back seats and kind of like being captain. It's another responsibility because you are the one who taking all decisions. 
That's amazing. That's amazing. I know we've talked in the past about, uh, you know, when fighting's done one day, you know, maybe you living on a boat and traveling around the world doing things like that on a boat. What about you? Would you ever want to get your pilot license? It seems like that would come in handy for as much as you travel, Valentina. Uh, you know, yes, definitely. I am thinking about that. But it's as I mentioned, it's a hard work. You cannot like uh, you have to spend full time studying uh, about aviation, studying all the rules, all the, because it's not kind of like you have to study it for uh, just to know. No, you have to actually know that because depends of your knowledge, it depends uh, your life, life of your passengers. And seeing what Antonina did, and she was like completely dive in what she is doing. And she, um, like all these years, she was like super determined and to make it like very correctly, very right. Because that's why I, I kind of like, I don't know if even it's going to happen, but hopefully it's going to happen one day for me. If there's one thing I've learned about you over the years, Valentina, it's that you are capable of anything. Uh, so I'm quite sure you will get that pilot license one day. Uh, it just may be a couple of years down the road. Uh, Valentina, it is always an honor and a pleasure to catch up with you. I really do appreciate you doing this, especially with the fight literally a week away. So thank you so much. Uh, I would say, I'll say safe training. I assume training camp is pretty much wrapped up at this point. And I would say safe travels, but you're already in Las Vegas. So you're already right there for the fight. Uh, so obviously best of luck in the fight we already have our our post fight date for afterwards so we will talk uh right after the fight when i can finally reintroduce you as ufc flyweight champion once again sounds good to me thank you so much damon have an amazing day